Now let's look at some installation tips. To install e-vents, first knock out the existing bird blocking. It might be necessary to use a saw to cut the blocking in half before you hammer it out. Remove debris from the opening so airflow won't be blocked. Then nail in the vent. If you're installing soffit vents, they should match the style, color, and placement of any existing soffit vents. These are called unit vents. Here is another type. These are called continuous louver vents. To install soffit vents so they appear straight when viewed from the ground, first create a cardboard template. Measure from the wall to the inside edge of an existing vent or to the inside edge of the first vent you install. Use this distance to mark the inside edge of the vent on the template. Scribe the proper hole size on the template and cut it out. Make sure the hole is as large as the screened opening in the vent. Use this template to mark the locations and hole size of all the soffit vents. Check the nailing pattern on the soffit to identify where to avoid rafters. Cut the vent holes using a reciprocating saw. To start the hole, hold the saw at a sharp angle against the wood. This should help keep the saw from bouncing so you get a clean entry point. Clear out existing insulation and other debris from the vent opening. Nail the vent in place. Be sure the vent louvers point toward the house. Before any insulation is blown in, these vents must be baffled from inside the attic to keep them from being blocked by the insulation. For more information on how to baffle eave and soffit vents, see another video in this series titled How to Prepare and Insulate Attics. Now let's look at roof vents. The most important requirement for roof vents is to install them so they won't leak. They should also be installed so they are evenly spaced and in a straight line when viewed from the ground. If there are existing roof vents and you are adding more, install the new ones to match the line of the existing vents. Use the shingle rows as a guide for locating and cutting vent holes. Start the top of the hole two shingle rows down from the ridge. Here the installer uses a reciprocating saw. He uses the edge of the shingles as a guide to cut a straight line. He avoids rafters by changing his cutting direction when he feels a rafter hit the saw blade. He also uses the shingles to gauge the size of the hole. Notice how he stops the cut for this vent just above the bottom of the third row of shingles. Thank <laughs> you.
Remove nails from above the hole and from each side of the hole so the vent can slide in place. Orient the roof vent so the closed side faces the peak of the roof. Slide the roof vent up as far as possible under the shingles. Make sure all the shingles overlap each other and the vent. The bottom edge of the vent overlaps the row of shingles at the bottom of the hole. Nail the vent to the roof. If nails are exposed, cover them with roofing mastic. On shake roofs, a taller roof vent called a hi-hat is required. With gable end vents, start inside the attic and drive a nail through the gable end wall to locate the vent. Back on the outside, be sure the hole size is smaller than the vent's outside dimensions. Once the hole is cut, install the vent. Nail one corner. Measure from a reference point to the corner you just nailed. Then adjust the other corner to the tape measure so the vent is level. Nail off the rest of the vent. Continuous ridge vents provide the most effective high ventilation. There are different types of ridge vents and each should be installed according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Calculating and installing attic ventilation correctly is a very important step before insulating an attic. In a quality attic ventilation job, the homeowner gets attic moisture control, natural cooling, and trouble-free vent performance.